Hey, Last Dogs crew. How important is the relationship between hair, makeup, and costume on set? Well, let's find out. Today on this bonus episode, we're catching up with a set costumer that I adore, Yen Doho. Yen has worked on projects such as Babylon, Amsterdam, Black Panther, Bombshell, and Jordan Peele's Us. So you could say she knows a thing or two when it comes to being a kick-ass on-set costumer. And remember guys, if you haven't had a chance to peruse The Last Looks website, what are you waiting for? Go and check out what wild and wonderful Last Looks goodies we have going on at last-looks.com. And if you're one of the wonderful Last Looks crew members that has bought the podcast a coffee or two or three, I want to send you big hugs and love. I appreciate the support and every little bit helps. So thanks guys. And if you'd like to buy the podcast a coffee sometime, check out the show notes on any episode and there will be a link. My name is Jamie Lee, a film hairstylist living in Long Beach, and this is The Last Looks Podcast, a show where I normally catch up with hairstylists and makeup artists working in the film and television industries around the world. But today, let's kick into this sweet little chat with set costumer Yen Doho. Let's go! And now, our feature presentation. Picture up. Last looks. Rolling. And action. Welcome to the Last Looks podcast, Yen. Hi, Jamie Lee. Thank you. <laughs> glad to be here. Yes, I'm glad to have you here. Now, you are an onset costumer and I know that I love working with you for many reasons, but one is because you are great at your job and the other is because you're incredibly professional. So I wanted mm-hmm. to <laughs> I wanted to chat to you about the onset relationships and dynamics between what you do and hair and makeup teams. Yes, I think that's a great subject to talk about because a lot of the times I don't think that we necessarily get to talk to one another or forge relationships that really allow for that. It just depends though on the projects. And I think at the type of work that we have been doing lately and together, it really would benefit even more to have that communication line. Yeah, to kind of set it up at the beginning. Yes, like I love the idea of having like an introduction, especially if we know ahead of time, which we should by then, even in prep mode, like by the time I come on, which is quite late Mm. into it, but like understanding who's taking care of whom. And so that even just a, hey, you know, I'm so-and-so and and this is who I'll be looking after as well. And, you know, maybe is, is there anything that you're thinking about that you may need or just any ideas in general to just make things go a little more smoothly just right off the bat than trying to initially get there and even go, Wait, who, who's, who's looking after this person? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who's here? Who's makeup? Who's looking after what? Yeah, what are they doing? Uh, I mean, there's enough of that on the first day as it is. I mean, we're trying to, mm-hmm. you know, figure out set and find out who's doing what and who you need to know. So, yeah, that would cut at least one more department <laughs> out of having to figure that all out on the spot. So let's start super simple and explain to me what exactly your role is in the costume department. Well, as you mentioned, I'm usually a set costumer. So I take care of the actors on set and I mostly do principal sets. So I'm taking care of, you know, the leads as well as the day players and all this, uh, the speaking roles, basically, right? So we have a tendency to have as many set people as it allows for and what the project calls for. And so we divide up some of the main cast and then the day players too. And we help them get dressed for the day. I, you know, as well as you tend to do a lot more period costuming, which then requires more help Mm -hmm. (laughs) with the actors to get them ready and comfortable. So I look after them as far as their costumes, how they get that on. And, you know, sometimes they need a little extra assistance with, say, going to the bathroom at times. And then there's stunt work, which also requires us to have a relationship with other departments as well. And so I help to see if they need a little bit more uh, with the costuming end to make the pads look more seamless or comfortable or you know, holes for where the wire work will happen. 
that sort of thing. There's a lot to it. I think I love my job because I do get to interact directly with other departments uh, on set. And then, of course, the filmmaking itself, seeing it actually roll out and, you know, be captured on camera. I think that's the coolest part of it. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, because you also work with sound too quite closely a lot of the yes. time too, don't you? Yes. Yes. Sometimes there's there's a definitely a collaboration there going on. If there are specialty costumes, if there are more difficult costumes to wire, then it's something that we can even work out ahead of time, uh, embed and really place a microphone to help that uh, remain uh conspicuous <laughs> and for sound to capture what they need to. Yeah. yeah. So how important do you feel the relationship between on-set costumers and hair and makeup should be or is or could be? I think it makes everything more efficient and easier and even joyful if costumes has a good relationship with hair and makeup because we're all coming in at the same time to do last looks together Mm. and there is sort of a procedure of you know if there's a coat that needs to come off or I'm sometimes waiting to be the last one to touch because you know if there's powder or if there's extra little bit of hair or something that falls onto the costume, then, you know, I can kind of get in there last and then walk away and be done too. But I think it really helps for us to all be seamless so that no one is being left out on their time and space in that moment. Yeah. So I guess just because a lot of the time you may be deciding that it's best to do last like be the last last of the looks um yeah that hair and makeup just be conscious of that that they need to i mean you know most people are trying to work quickly but just know that there may be somebody after you that needs to do stuff and they're already you know calling rolling (laughs) right which i feel like that's always a threat they call that when they call last looks nowadays so (laughs) yeah last looks rolling you're like um sorry hang on a minute what (laughs) why did you even bother to say last looks that's fun (laughs) um yeah I really don't like that at all (laughs) so I mean I was thinking about this before we started chatting and I know that I've worked with some makeup artists who are of a older generation I suppose um, mm-hmm. who I think they were used to working that there was some type of hierarchy almost that they believe mm-hmm. in of who goes first when um, that's not something I've ever worked with or kind of dealt with myself personally um, I mean maybe I've pissed some people off by not waiting my turn I'm not entirely <laughs> sure but um, I, I mean I normally just try and stay very conscious of myself makeup and costume that we can all kind of do that dance kind of you know buzzing around the cast and and get in wherever we can sharing information because because i'm usually on a headset on radio on channel one I get access to information usually a little bit quicker than you guys are, you know, so I'm always happy to share, hey, they're about to call someone in or, hey, we need to do this or, oh, they're asking for this or that, the other thing, you know. Yeah, I think Um, you always have to deal with me going, what's happening? (laughs) (laughs) what's happening what's happening you don't yeah you don't have a good ad department or first team pa that's really looking out for all of us Mm. then yeah there's a lag in if not even a (laughs) non-communication yeah that's going on (laughs) and what other ways do you find hope like useful with communication like i know that there's like if If you're looking after, I mean, most of the time you are looking after multiple people. Um, Mm -hmm. But do you think sometimes if you know that you have a lot that you've got to get done, that having a quick powwow with hair and makeup to be like, who are you going to go do first? So you can kind of divide and conquer, I suppose. So I never thought about that. I think like because 
we're looking around really quickly assessing like the state of things, right? So mm-hmm. sometimes you guys might be touching a person that I know I need to get to, but there's another person that you guys haven't done that or have already finished with. So I'll go to them first. Or sometimes I'm pro- also prioritizing like how many things still need to go on their person or their bodies yeah. before they're actually ready yeah. and trying to like, you know, get through that first as well. So I don't always think about it that way. Um, you kind of just roll with the roll with it. Yeah. Mm. Yes. You want to be as ready as you can be. But then there's also, well, there is also the the priority of people as well, right? Who who mm. gets to walk last and be looked last. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I know that I have not many, but... Every now and again, someone comes into my life that's a set costumer that I want to kick them <laughs> in the shins. Um, <laughs> I want to get violent with them because I'm like, what are you doing? Just um, mentally, <laughs> right? Just, you know, just mentally. Absolutely. I'd never actually do it. I just like huff and puff and um, quietly to myself about it. Um <laughs> <laughs> but so what are some things, I guess, that just drive you nuts? Like what are some pet peeves that we as hair and makeup people do that maybe we should think twice about and consider possibly working on to help that relationship become a little more harmonious? Right. I have to say that there's definitely at least one thing that comes to mind that I'm still surprised when I work with more experienced people that this still continues to happen. And I don't know, it's just my expectations aren't being realistic (laughs) or what it is. But something as simple to me as, say, for instance, for hair, keeping somebody when they're getting a trim or a cut of some kind. I find there's so many times, like it happens on the regular where I, I'll come to, I'll see my actor after they've gone through, you know, they, maybe they put on their undershirt or their top shirt because it needs to go over the head and that's got to go on first mm. or something. And then they'll go in and get a trim and then I'll see tiny little hairs all over their shirt. I'm like, I don't understand. Did they not keep you? And, you know, I'm asked, and I do ask the actor themselves sometimes this because it's just like having a normal conversation with a friend like, hey, what happened here? And so they'll go, no, they didn't keep me. And I'm like, but why? <laughs> not using a cape at all? When they yes. do like a full haircut or like a... Well, like- just a trim or any kind of any kind of cutting of the hairs on their heads it's shocking to me all the face like i experienced this non-stop like no matter when it was when i was first starting out mm. to even like i'm saying you know a project or two ago where i'm like i don't i don't understand why i have to ask for this yeah <laughs> i wonder because I know sometimes, I mean, God, fuck, hair gets everywhere. I mean, sometimes it's, it's people shit. don't like wearing it, perhaps. It's yeah, hot, I mean, I've I've dealt with that. But that also, mm-hmm. normally when that's happening is the, the, the few times that that has happened, they are in their own clothes. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. So it's mm-hmm. well before they've even got into any costume. And they know they've worn those clothes because they they're prepared for whatever might happen to them hair and makeup wise but they don't want to wear a cape Mm -hmm. but I haven't really I don't think I've come across that I mean I don't even if if an actor told me that I couldn't put a cape over the costume I'd be like um yeah can I just do it like this (laughs) and try and figure out some other way to do it (laughs) right um yeah. I mean, I feel like it's just basic respect really there. You know, like if I'm trying to put on a coat, a warming coat or a robe or something with with an actor and being like, hey, you need to sweep your hair out or can you hold your hair out first before like I before it gets smashed by, you know, the back of mm. this warming coat or hoodie or whatever. Mm. You know? <laughs> so it's like automatic things that I think should kind of be there that aren't. And for makeup. I kind of recall this experience with, I think it was with uh, special effects makeup, though. Mm. They had ended up spraying one of the actors 
uh, for aging and it got onto the clothing and it was not water based. <laughs> no. <laughs> I found out after the fact and that was really alarming and frightening too. And I know that we are pressed to do things in moments mm. and sometimes last moments. But I feel like there has to be the thought and the energy put towards like what how does this affect other things that are beyond just the head <laughs> that you guys are dealing with? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it. not only should hair people have a cape on set with them, makeup should That's also. What I, you know what? That was one of the notes I have on here is mm. like. You guys normally carry a cape with you. Does does makeup too? I feel like I don't know what's in the bag sometimes. Well, I feel like most hair people probably do. I know that I always have a cape with me, if not multiple towels as well. Like if it's like for whatever reason, a cape has not been replaced in my kit. As you're saying with the flicking of makeup and stuff like that, I think, yeah, a cape is definitely necessary for makeup as well. Even... I was doing a couple of jobs back. I was doing a lot of airbrushing on hair and oh. making sure that I didn't, t- and I was sometimes having to do it on last looks, mm-hmm. but I never, I never took a full cape in with me, but I always made sure that I had a decent sized towel Ow. that I mm-hmm. could completely drape over there because they're wearing a suit. So completely drape over their collar, their shoulder, you know, that side. And yep. then I would move around to the back, move the towel around, move it around, move it around mm-hmm. with me. So at least there yes. was something there because that's not only the fear of the spray getting on it, but what if I drop it or spill it or like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Any, anything that can happen in that time. Yeah. True. I think too with haircuts though, I mean, it is that thing of just hair getting everywhere, but it may, there may be times that a cape right? has been used. I imagine yeah. hair trim is like the glitter of your world. Pretty much. <laughs> like, and you can use a cape and you can try and do everything you can, but I'm just thinking of what else could be happening. If someone isn't after that haircut, really giving it a good kind of like shake with their fingers through, like removing loose hair from the head, ah, then yes. within, yeah, you know, so like prickle. for the next however long, if mm-hmm. they touch their hair or move, like shake their head round, hair still could be falling down. So a cape might have been used, but I'm wondering mm-hmm. if it's just that extra kind of really trying to get rid of the loose hair that might be still on the head. That's fair. That's a fair assessment too. I just recall that the times that I have asked the actor directly, it's usually been no, no. they did not. <laughs> And so if it happens more than once, then I will go to the hair person and then, you know, talk to them about it directly. But I usually just let it go the first time because I'm like, I don't know what happened Mm. in that moment. It's a little disappointing, but, you know, we'll just move on from this. And yes, strike one. Okay, sure. We'll see. (laughs) Strike two, you know what? We need to have a conversation. <laughs> yeah. And is it the same for, because I know that what I see a lot of is makeup ending up on collars for men. And I know that that. Yes. I mean, it's tricky. That's a tricky thing. Yeah. And that's something that I have realized that I do need to ask makeup, especially, well, on men, especially, right? Mm-hmm. We we talk about this beforehand, Like, do you, and especially if it's a high profile actor too, because sometimes we don't have a choice, neither one of us, you know, if they, if they want it on their necks, it's going on their necks. Mm. (laughs) It's just what it is. Yeah. And so I've asked about that and I, I've had conversations where it's also been told to me that they don't like a sealer or a fixative because of the way that feels. So, and that happened actually recently to me on on a show. So then that was a very low budget show. So there wasn't as much that we could do about it. And I just let my designer know that we may, if anything, need to get an additional shirt. Right. And then it was brought up 
from our side, our design team, well, can we put it in their budget? And I said, I don't know about that. That sounds like a supervisor conversation over to, you know, that department itself. Right. But, you know, to the producers itself so that they understand where this extra shirt is having to come into the equation of, you know? Right. But yeah, that's definitely something that I try to discuss ahead of time so that we know that we're prepared for enough multiples on the shirt or enough multiples in the way that we can turn them around while one is being out cleaned, you know, another one is still being able to be used. Right. And then there is also like different tricks and stuff I've seen from costumers as well, where they'll put like a paper tape or even press and seal on the collar. So just a temporary thing until basically when the actor gets dressed, they have it on. Then by the time the camera is going to be rolling like last looks, then it's peeled off. So it has a little bit more time to be clean and and crisp versus later on when it starts to be layered, you know, the the makeup transfer and then it sort of continues to to cake up on. Yeah. And then is there any, have you experienced times where hair and makeup have just been completely oblivious that you need to do your job at all? I mean, yes. (laughs) But I think that's like when you don't even necessarily have that introduction like period even Mm. so I feel like people warm up more when they have a face and a name and an understanding that you guys are trying to work together Mm -hmm. I mean I can't really think of anything too recent where I haven't had a good exchange just some disappointments you know like you know in, in the same vein of talking about overspray and things like that and people not being taped or towel or this and that I have to say the only other thing that comes to mind immediately in that same subject mm. is sweat. So makeup specifically, right? Sweat and the use of glycerin. Right. I realize that most makeup, if they are experienced, will only use water. Mm-hmm. Like when they're spraying on top of or that last layer. And glycerin usually just, or anything oil-based, on, directly on the face themselves, right? But once in a while, I'll get someone that has a mixture of it that's just spraying. And then I'm like, oh. But you understand that gets onto the clothes, and then glycerin just embeds in the clothes, and it stays and remains. It doesn't necessarily wash out most of the time. Yeah. So that's a disappointment, mine too. <laughs> yeah, I am uh, guilty of that on one of my last jobs, not even thinking about what my actor was going to be wearing. And mm-hmm. it was for a, it wasn't a camera, like it wasn't an on camera test, but it was just a test for us to get him into his, you know, final look. And luckily it happened then you know, for the designer and I to have that conversation, she's just like, what is in his hair at the nape? And I was just like, oh, okay. I know what's going on. (laughs) And it was just like, he's going to be wearing a cream turtleneck. And I'm just like, oh, okay. (laughs) Yeah, copy that. I completely understand. I will hold off on what it was that I was using around that area. (laughs) And as soon as she said it to me, I was just like, oh my God, shit. What was I thinking? (laughs) And all I was thinking about was just trying to, you know, hit the mark with how I needed it to look but not Absolutely. thinking about what that might be touching and had no idea that he was going to be wearing a cream colored turtleneck so I was just like okay I need to rethink this whole situation <laughs> through the back and do something different oh was it a coloring product then in the hair it was a, <laughs> lady it was a mixture so it was a jojoba mm-hmm. oil it was an oil not mm-hmm. great not great Mm -hmm. and then it was also yes a temporary color yeah and I just avoided using that around the nape you know I just blended it out it was fine at the end of the day Mm -hmm. it wasn't a noticeable thing and then we were 
happy, and then happy as clams. Always, yes. <laughs> All was fine, All but fine. yeah, <laughs> I thought the designer was going to like kill me for a second there. Um, but luckily <laughs> it was figured out early on and, and we sorted it out. And That's why camera tests are so important. Well, yeah. this wasn't a camera test, but... But it was before we started shooting, so yeah. there was time to for us to both kind of fix my fuck up but yeah it is having those conversations like if I had had more of an in-depth conversation with her about what he was wearing then yes. maybe it would have clicked into my brain to be like oh yeah oh, I need to be conscious of that um yeah. but because we hadn't got that far with our communication that happened so yeah the communication thing is is big the most vital thing with all the departments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I will say, and I might I might just be getting this completely wrong, but I feel like when I was working in New Zealand, we didn't really take care of hats and things. And we only did if it was something that needed to be physically, like, secured to the hair. What do you, what do you mean by taking care of? Well... I feel like a lot of times over here it kind of gets handed to me to be the one that's putting it back on continuity and paying attention to all of that. Mm. And I'm kind of like, is this a gray area or is this, uh, can I be like, hey, I'm not comfortable with hats. Can you please deal with the hat? <laughs> or I, I don't mean, know where that line I is. I don't know what, right. you know what I mean? I think this is a, yeah, I think this is a fair ask though because – if I do hand over a hat initially, it's a the communication of there is a hat. Yeah. You may have seen it. It's real now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's going on. Mm. And we would like you to place it. But sometimes the actor places it, too, unless you're talking about securing it, you know, men's hats versus women's hats. Mm, right. Mm. So I do think that with women's hat, then the continuity probably does end up lying with you guys because of the security of it and sometimes it's being attached to a wig and that sort of thing too right yeah. is that fair yeah right? i think so absolutely that makes sense to me when it needs to be secured then yeah yeah or if it's going on something that's a little like uh, i uh, yeah I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to break your hairstyle with this hat. So can you? <laughs> but I, I always want to do it together as well. I don't ever want to be left yes. with dealing with the hat and me going, um, mm-hmm. costume. <laughs> Am no, I doing I, this right? Yes. Does this look how no, it's I supposed agree. to look? Yeah. But sometimes I'm unsure of some of the way those hats are supposed to be placed too. Hmm. You know, there is a right way. There's also not the right way, and then there's also like. A design way, perhaps even, mm, right? Yeah. So I think that it does, it can lend itself to having like the designer come and be like, you know, she's the one that ultimately, or I'm getting information from her and maybe there is a fitting photo mm-hmm. and there's the explanation of it. Well, it needs to go here because of this or that or the other thing. And, and then I can communicate to you guys to to have that happen. As far as the men's hats, though, I think, Maybe the first time is just to let you guys know that there is a hat on this gentleman. Mm -hmm. Um, But sometimes I end up just putting it in their rooms if they like to be complete in character before they leave their trailer. Yeah. But then they'll end up placing it them for, you know, placing it themselves on their own head. Mm. And that's kind of that. Or it's a character hat, you know, so at some point they should know (laughs) what that is too. But I do believe that if, there's going to be a hat removal or a hat put back on then it is the two of us to come to like okay here's the hat i don't want to mess up what it's going on which is your territory too Mm. then you know we kind of place it together yeah okay and then Um, this may be a gray area also or you might just be like that's very black and white jamie what are you talking about but um (laughs) say you have like a a bandana or something or a like a scarf situation oh, that is yeah. tied kind of around mm-hmm. the forehead. So like if a guy's mm-hmm. wearing it, almost like a sweatband type of thing, but it's a bandana and it's, okay. and it's come from costume. It hasn't come from as a hair accessory. Yeah. So yeah. where does that land, do you think? I mean, in my personal opinion, I haven't had to do that 
I don't think anywhere recent that I recall of. But if I had to do that, I would want it to be a collaboration with both of us. Like, again, I mean, there's one way to wrap it right and see like the width of the band. Mm. Like I would go over with my designer, like how, why do you want this to be since everybody's forehead and everybody's head is of different sizes. Yeah. And to do that together and then maybe hand it over to you guys already folded in the right way, maybe even pre-stitched so that it doesn't continue to expand <laughs> or contract. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then just hand it over and, and make sure that it, it looks like how we want it to look for character. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I think it is it is that kind of almost if you have to say out loud, like, let's do this together. Yeah. Like, let's help each other out with this. Like, we'll we'll both keep an eye on it. I'll be here when you put it on just to make sure that it's in the right spot and how the designer wants it to look. Righty, righty, rah. Yeah. I think I remember working on something once where that kind of happened at the beginning and then it was almost just left to us and then the bandana, like, it would go walkabouts at the end of the next right. day they'd be it's like where's the up. bandana and it's just like I don't know like he left set with it on his head like I'm sorry well, were we supposed to take it off and put like I don't uh, uh, hang on a minute I thought it was a costume yeah. piece is it not in his trailer mm-hmm. like it was just like I, I don't know where it is oh, I'm no, sorry so count for it. yeah so it's just like the communication I guess started off I guess well but then something happened and went I, awry yeah it was yeah. just like oh okay so yeah I've just always been curious about that I'm just it's like where no that's a really good ask though because i would maybe have a discussion to see where it should land at the tail end of the night and where it where it will be or where it should be top of the morning mm. before it goes on to the actor's head like there needs to be clarity with that right if we hang on to it then am i giving it and uh, am I bringing it over to your trailer every morning or are you guys okay with taking it off and leaving it in your trailer because it's going to be put back on his head or do I come fetch it every other day because it needs to be cleaned or something, you know, like what is it? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And I mean, some casts don't come back to us at the end of the day, so we're just not gonna right. not gonna see it. I guess I would advise that if you're not clear about what's happening, that you should have the conversation, right? Right, because it just takes one time for it to go missing. <laughs> yeah, and if you don't have a backup, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> and I'm like, why didn't you have a second one? One is, one is none. <laughs> one is none. One is none. That's fantastic. I love that. You should put that on a shirt, lady. <laughs> I should. I should. (laughs) That's awesome. (laughs) I love that. But can you think of anything else? I mean, that kind of, I feel like we've covered some good ground. It sounds like communication is a big one. And just being respectful and conscious of what the other people need to do. Yes. I feel like those are, I mean, we kind of covered everything that was on my short list of things I wrote down previously Mm -hmm. that I wanted to talk about. But yeah, I think just to highlight again, like the, if there's any way for our department heads or keys or whatever to have that prior introduction when we're just loading in, you know, and that kind of thing, I think would really just give us some smoother start in some ways. Familiarity. Yeah. And it's Mm -hmm. funny isn't it how we kind of I don't know we start off and we're so in our little bubble and then you might see each other at the camera test if there is one and if not then it's that first day on set and it's just like oh okay who's doing costume what's happening who oh okay and who are you looking after and Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah so I think that's a that's why I get so joyful when I see names of people or see people that I didn't know that were going to be there that I do know and have worked with because just that instant Mm. knowledge like familiarity just makes it so much easier like all of a sudden you're speaking the same language yeah yeah i um (laughs) (laughs) i was just gonna i my my last nightmare situation that i had with a concert costumer was oh yeah um, was having an actress who had a wig on and it was curly wavy so Mm -hmm. i had a decent amount of volume going on with it and of course we were doing a lot of nights and it was very cold 
and yeah. a massive heavy puffer jacket with a hood just kept getting completely smashed on top of it. And mm. I was just like, what is happening? What, and was it, it a Canada goose? What kind of heavy puffer was it? Well, just, I mean, it probably wouldn't even matter if it was a, if it was a, a zip up hoodie. It's just, it was just mm-hmm. smashing the hair. And I was trying to get in there as quickly as I could to like be able to swoop it. But that was mm-hmm. the great thing with the costumer is that she was very on top of keeping our actress warm. But at yeah. the same time, I was just like, I'd get like three takes in and be like, yep, the hair's fucked for the day. That's it. I'm just going to keep it. Oh, I'm just going to, no. I'm just going to keep it fucked because I, I just, I cannot, I just can't keep up with this. Like we didn't have time to be able to, you know, like I need five minutes with her to curl it or it just wasn't ever going to happen. It wasn't possible. No. So yeah. I was just like, <laughs> I can't remember I came up with some name that it was just like it had a ridge, like a permanent ridge from hell in it. Oh, no. <laughs> just like, Wait, were is... you able to talk to the costumer at all? She was very aware. Yeah, I, okay. and I, I made, I ended up having to make the actress aware of it as well. Um, okay. Because I guess the costumer wasn't, as helpful as possibly could have been but I guess she was just more concerned about her being cold which I completely understand yes but if she had been more gentle (laughs) with the action of putting on the coat it would have made a difference though right yeah maybe (laughs) maybe (laughs) I mean once it smashes it down it just smashes it down you know I I also am always open and very happy for somebody to lift the hair up themselves if that's what oh, really? I would rather okay. that like I mean and that might be a conversation that you need to have with the other person as well it's just like I, I don't want you to have to do my job but if I happen to not be there and you see that that coat is just right. going to smash the hair yeah. then please pick it up and flip it on the other side of the Move coat it. like yeah. it's just yeah, yeah. please please I please, always please. ask the actor though I'm like hey can you pick up your hair I'm just gonna put this jacket on and I don't want it to yeah, I mean, how the underneath of the how chair. how hard's that to do? I mean, yeah. that's a simple ask as well. Yes. So, and isn't it interesting though? But sometimes actors are completely conscious of that and know that straight away. Mm-hmm. It just depends on the person too. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I guess I was feeling very grateful for all the amazing relationships I'd had in the past with other onset costumers. <laughs> Where I hadn't yeah. had such struggle with somebody. So I was just like, oh, why is this so hard? What is the what is the deal with asking an actor to, that it, like letting them know that it's time to remove their coat? I find that I'm usually gauging the actor first and seeing how they will be about it, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm really lucky, (laughs) it'll be an actor that has already left their coat at their chairs before they walk in. Right. (laughs) But that doesn't always happen. So just saying like, hey, are we ready to go? May I take your coat? I think it's the general go to ask of things so it's okay to ask because I guess that was a thing that I was coming across as well is that question was not being asked oh that's strange you have an actress (laughs) that is like fully getting like mentally ready for what they Mm -hmm. need to do and we would be standing there and it would be like you know last looks we're turning over we're rolling yeah and the first AD would be like okay we got we're doing it you know, you know, <laughs> get 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 out of there, get out of there, and I'd be standing there going, I can't move until the coat comes off because I still have to do what I have to do. Yeah. But the costumer just would absolutely wait until the actress, and I will say, just cottons on to, oh, I have to take my coat off. Oh, that's what everybody's waiting for. Like she, right. she was just so in her rhythm and groove of what thinking right. about what she needed to do that of course she's not thinking about that the coat needs to no, come off no she's, she's not just hearing really like she's the, and then she like clocks yeah. that we're still standing there and mm-hmm. she's like why are you still here oh my coat needs to come off yes so that was very confusing for me as well and I was just like I must ask somebody if there's just like if some set costumers just do not ask at all and just purely wait for the actor until they're ready I would only do that 
if I know that that is their rhythm. Mm-hmm. But a lot of times, I feel more normally like they're not conscious of the timing. Like they're gonna go when they hear the word action, yeah. and up until then, they're not necessarily looking around and clocking mm. where the process of last looks is mm-hmm. either. Yeah. So I feel like it's also my job to communicate that, mm-hmm. so then that we progress through the stages where we're supposed to and be ready. Yeah. Uh, for Just when they're calling it, help it all move, keep moving. Yeah. Yeah. At least starting out with that and then seeing where that leads to, because you also don't know if that actor has their own timeline. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And where the pushback, if there is such a thing going to happen too. Right, right, right. I get that totally. Like, I'll tell you when I'm ready. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's what, but sometimes you get that look Mm -hmm. that communicates that <laughs> yeah but i mean and, and as you say it's just the the wording of it it's just like you can just be like oh, i'm here to grab your coat whenever you're ready yeah it's just that makes them aware like oh it's time to do that now yeah we're getting close to that time, time or, they need that nudge just those words is the nudge to know yeah and if they trust you because you're actually telling them the correct information mm. when it happens then they will learn also to take your word for it because other times they don't necessarily believe you and then they won't make those actions <laughs> yeah they like standing there with their coat off going it's two minutes and we're still not Nobody's yes. called action and I'm freezing. Can yes. I have my coat back? <laughs> yes. Like you can nudge and tell and, and request something to happen, but you also have to be mindful that you're telling them the truth of the time frame too. Mm, mm, yeah. <laughs> I just, I think I got to the end of that job and I was just like, man, if I had added up all the time that we stood there waiting for the coat to come off, Imagine how much more shooting time they would have got. Like it was, it was, sometimes it was extreme. I'd just be standing there going, what is happening? But you know, I'll survive lady. I'll survive. (laughs) But anyway, I would love to thank you for joining me today. And I look forward to being on set with you again sometime soon. Jamie Lee, this has been so much fun. Thank you. I really mean it when I say that I was so flattered when you asked me about this whenever it was months ago. (laughs) But I was like telling my friends like, Jamie Lee asked me if I would be on her podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And then I got super nervous. (laughs) No, it's easy. Easy. I mean, it's easy when you know what you're talking about and you are sharing what you know. So, yeah. (laughs) Yes, it's comfortable. And yes, I feel the same way. Can't wait until we find one another on the same set again, because that's always fun. (laughs) 